from converting 223 to 300 blackout to loading 300 blackout to shooting 300 blackout full auto, we got you covered in this video. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. Check out this setup. Over here, we've got a Dillon CP2000 connected to a DA3000 auto-driven conversion of 223 and 556 to 300 blackout. That's right, it trims it. It does everything it needs to do to convert it to 300 blackout. Over here, we've got the RL1100 set up to load 220 grain subsonic 300 blackout ammo. And here we've got two machine guns. We've got a CMMG Banshee 300 blackout 8 inch SBR, three round burst with a Fodera Armory Hill Country full auto SBR rated 30 cal can. And then we've also got the other machine gun you've seen here on the channel, which is based on an aero precision platform with a carbine length 300 blackout upper and a Silencer Co hybrid can. We're going to put all of this equipment to good use in this story. What I wanted to do was load some validation ammo. We're going to put it through both machine guns and when we're happy with that we're going to go to town converting and loading at the same time. Then I'll break down these setups station by station and talk about all the special considerations for 300 blackout which there are many. So I'm going to get to loading that test ammo. All right, that should be enough ammo to do our testing. I wanna make double sure that both of these machine guns are super happy with this 300 BLK ammo. So let's go test that next. Well, that was fun. This ammo is working great in the SBR and in the carbine, and that means we're ready for full-scale loading. So, this is gonna get noisy. I'm gonna do the startup sequence over here on the CP2000. I've already lowered the tool head all the way to the bottom position. That's the homing position. The machine is powered on. We're gonna turn on the case trim, then the vacuum, and then hit start. Okay. And I'm gonna load. So that was a little bit crazy running two machines myself simultaneously. A lot to listen for and a lot to keep your eyes on, but wow, what a feeling of productivity, which is great when you have machine guns to feed. Next, let's break everything down. All of the setup process, the station utilization, and let's start over with case conversion, since that's what we work on first in this sequence. So here we're putting 223556 commercial once fired brass in the case feed bowl. We sprayed it with lanolin. It's going through all of the stations. It's getting decapped, it's getting swaged, it's getting trimmed, and then there's a 30 cal mandrel at the last station. And if you wanna see how this machine is put together, the CP2000 with the DA3000, I'd recommend that you watch the first video that goes over all those details. I did make a fundamental switch over for this loading session. Originally, I had swaging on the left-hand side as viewed from the operator's perspective. I moved swaging over to the right-hand side. It does involve taking the crankshaft out of the machine and the eccentric gets put on the other side. So not a real big deal. And the reason that I did that was so that I could have better access for this vacuum suction uh, manifold right here. And so now I'm in the middle of this cut down section. This is the special lowered trimming head for 
the Super 1050 and the RL1100. This allows the entire trim die and trimming assembly to go down far enough to trim those short 300 blackout cases. And so I also redid my vacuum setup. I made this little slip on adapter uh, so that I could just connect it and disconnect it real easily as well. So uh, when you go to set this up, obviously you need the right shell plate. This is a number three shell plate for 223. Uh, you need the appropriate case feed parts, the, basically the caliber conversion kit for the CP2000 for 300 blackout. But I will make one note, you're feeding 223 cases. So I used the, the different case feed adapter that the, that the drop tube goes into because the opening size is wrong for 300 blackout. If we were just reprocessing 300 blackout, all of the parts would be work. When you're converting, you just have to bear that in mind. So the cases are fed. We've got a lead decapper in station number two. We're calling the case insertion station number one. I've got an oversized RCBS die. This is a six creed die over the swaging station, and this is just acting as a hold down die. Then we've got an empty station, we've got another empty station, then we've got the trimming and reforming. So let's take a look at the sequence here. The 223 or 556 case goes in, it gets decapped, it gets swaged. And then this is uh, one of the cases from my setup process. First, you're going to take the die and you're going to lower it until your shoulder for 300 blackout is pushed to the right depth. And you're going to want to use a case gauge to monitor the progress as you lower the die and push that shoulder down. Then it's time to install the trimmer. And what I do, it's really simple, is just screw the trimmer down until the bar on the trimmer stops rotating because it hits the case mouth. Right there, you know that you're at approximately the right trim length. Uh, I turned it on and trimmed a case, and this is a converted case right here. Put it in the case gauge, and the case gauge on the back side has the trim to length indicator for it. So if you've got sufficient sizing, and if you've got the correct trim length, you're going to get 300 blackout cases all in one pass. And then, like I mentioned, in the last station, you're going to have the 30 cal neck mandrel that's going to ensure that the neck is got the appropriate ID, regardless of case uh, neck thickness, and that the bullets will have the right case neck tension. So there are a few things here to keep an eye on. You're going to want to make sure that your indexing is set up correctly and that all of the dies are acting together correctly. And I started a little bit slower and up to the speed as I got more confident. Uh, the lanolin makes quite a mess and we did wet tumbling after that to knock off some of the loose burrs uh, from the trimming process and to get some of that lanolin off. It didn't work perfectly, but it got plenty of the lanolin off. So at the end of the day, we just keep spraying cases with lanolin and dumping them in the top and we get a bucket full of converted 300 blackout cases, which is totally awesome. Next, let's go over to the reloading press, talk about loading 300 blackout. So here we have the Dillon RL 1100, which is the new and updated version of what people were used to as the Super 1050. The RL 1100 is very, very similar to the CP2000. The CP2000 does not come with priming, it does not come with powder charging, and it has some slightly different optimizations to be a case processing machine. The RL1100 can be set up for rifle, can be set up for pistol, for large primers, for small primers. Uh, you can do pretty much anything up to 308 cartridge overall length on this machine, and it's happy pumping out thousands and thousands of rounds. And the setup on this, there's some similarities here. We've got the number three shell plate. We've got a 300 blackout RL1100 caliber conversion kit, which comes with the case feed parts. It comes with the brass buttons, the locator buttons at each station. It comes with the shell plate and other parts that you're gonna need to just uh, make sure that your caliber conversion is completely set up properly for 300 blackout. And 
Again, we're using the same case feed system. It's got the small rifle case feed plate. And in terms of station utilization, in station number one, we've got insertion. In station number two, we've got a 223 small base sizer. Now there's a little bit of a story there. Uh, when we were loading rounds initially, we had a little bit too much stick in the case gauge for our comfort. And I did not have a 300 blackout small base sizer. And it turns out we narrowed it down to kind of the base of the case, seemed to be where the issue was. And if you look at a 300 blackout case, it'll actually fit inside a 223 chamber, which is a safety issue you have to look out for with your rifles. In this case, we were able to push the base down a little bit with that small base sizer and that improved things greatly. Okay, so that's station number two. We've got a decapping pin here, but we're running processed brass and we've already decapped, so that's more of a backup insurance uh, mechanism. Okay, station number three, we've got swaging. We're gonna swage again. Just in case we had an issue with the first swage, we're gonna reswage here just to make sure. And you never know, you might have previously fired brass or, or, or whatever going through your machine. To me, it's just cheap insurance. And we've got another oversized die here acting as the, the hold down die over that swaging station. Station number four is priming. Station number five is our powder measure. Station number six, we've got the Dillon powder check. And I had this set up on an XL650, I think was the last machine I had this set up on. You have to add the washer so that it will hit kind of the, the rim here of the press frame. On the XL650 and 750, there's a hole in the tool head and it goes down and it hits kind of closer in towards the middle. For the 1050 or for the RL1100, you have to have the washer and get that set up. Okay. Station number seven, we've got a Redding micrometer cedar die. And in station number eight, we've got the Lee factory crimp die to give us that nice crimp that's gonna help with feeding in a semi-auto and ensure perhaps a, a little bit more uh, reliability. And in terms of the load, we've got Barry's 220 grain plated bullets. These are super, super awesome for subsonic 300 blackout. I've done subsonic 762 by 39 with these. These are just great all around inexpensive bullets for this kind of action. And you know, when you get three round bursts and full auto going, it really, really helps to be able to load in volume and keep those costs down, you know, just a little bit. So, Again, with this press, you want to make sure that all of the dies are, are working in, in unison together. Uh, we did do some fine tuning with the priming system to get that to, to, to run properly. And we also cleaned the bottom of the shell plate, which had gotten gunked up and uh, did some fine tuning on the indexing to make sure that everything was where it needed to be. Now, the nice thing about the RL1100 is there is a locating pin that will force the shell plate to be indexed properly. And the primer slider has another pin that comes down and it forces that primer slider to be positioned perfectly under the case. So those two mechanisms are helpful. We've got the low primer warning going. We know if we have a charging problem, a powder charge problem, and we did try and get bullet feed set up with this and had an interesting issue. This 220 grain projectile is so long that on Mr. Bullet Feeder, it was hitting the, the extension of the drop tube. And so we didn't find an easy solution for that. If you know of a way to get around that, please let us know because I would love to get bullet feed up and going. But for a setup, just getting this going, I'm, I'm really happy with this, the speed that you can load. Basically, I just have to keep my ears open and feed a bullet each time. And that makes me <laughs> really happy over some of the other reloading setups that we've had that are a little bit less sophisticated. So that is kind of a deep dive on the case conversion and processing side and on the reloading side. If you have specific questions, please let me know. 
I personally feel like it's a good time to go out and do a little bit more shooting before we wrap things up. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I am having a ton of fun. This is so cool to have three round burst, full auto, case conversion and reloading kind of all on the one bench as you see it right here. Totally loving it. So here's my question for you. What do you think of the case conversion setup with the CP2000 and the DA3000? And what do you think of this RL1100 subsonic 300 blackout loading setup? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.